Hey, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, and I'm here with my lovely friend Daniel, which you've seen in some of the mukbang videos that we've done recently of each other in Koh Phangan, Thailand, at various different restaurants. And yeah, he has over two years worth of one meal a day experience, so I wanted to interview him a bit about his experience, so maybe you can learn something from him, be inspired by him, and motivated by him. So yeah, thank you for joining us in this video, and yeah, yeah, first off, how old are you? Because a lot of people are going to wonder this. I'm 20, 20 years old. So yeah, when when I met him and he told me that, I was like, wow, really? Like, so you started around 18 years old. That is absolutely yeah. amazing to improve your health. So it's really good that you had that open mind and yeah. Yeah, embarked on that journey. So how did you discover One Meal Day and what made you want to embark on this journey? Somehow I found Dr. Noon Amin Ra on YouTube because somebody mentioned like, yeah, this dude, you know, I think it was an example of how you can build muscle on a plant-based diet and they're like, well, this dude's doing it yeah. and he's only eating once a day. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, no way. And so I had to check it out and figure out, you know, what was going on there. And I, um, I watched his Marcus Rothkranz interview and was yeah. like really interested. And so I contacted him. Um, I sent him a donation and he sent me his work and I read it. And it took me about oh, two, three days to really understand what he was saying. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this a go. And so I went from uh, kind of a grazing type diet where I was eating a handful of this here and a handful yeah, of that here. most people do. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's probably eating five or six times a day. I went from that to cold turkey. No. I went to one meal a day. Um, and for me, that wasn't really too much of a problem. I noticed the first two days, maybe three days, about 1 p.m., I did have like a ravenous hunger that I really had to sit with. Um, but after that, it, you know, you really get into the, to the cycle of it and, it, and the meal is so rewarding that it's, it ends up being worth it in the end. Yeah. Um, and coffee helped me a lot because it's a natural appetite suppressant. And how would you have that coffee? Because it's obviously, yeah, certain, certain coffee mixtures will make you right. break out of a fasting state, as I'm sure you're aware. Ideally, you want your coffee to be organic. Um, you want to roast it yourself and... Um, um, completely black with nothing Completely added. black, yeah. And yeah. if you do sweeten it, you can use um, a, a stevia. Yeah. A stevia is a non-calorific sweetener, so it has no calories in it. and so we'll not break your fast at all. And you can um, you can find 100% stevia, but be careful. Um, I know like stevia in the raw is sold in the stores and it's actually dextrose or aspartame or is uh, okay. one of those. Um, so be careful with that. But you can't find stevia that's 100% and organic and good stuff. Yeah. Um, so coffee, herbal teas, and you can sweeten those with stevia as well. And just drink a lot of water and that's about the best advice I have to making it through the fast, as well as walking, exercise, um, just um, kind of distract yourself from this feeling of, of needing a, a form of energy is ultimately what you're wanting when you're <laughs> wanting food, is you're wanting to consume um, energy. And there's ways to do that other than eating. You can read a book, you can watch a movie, um, talk to a friend, go on a walk, yeah, get in uh, nature, loads of different things. Right, get some sunlight. Yeah. And have you, know. you found that, do people need to be consuming any other liquids apart from water? Because obviously you're saying like you don't at the moment drink coffee, correct? Yeah, yeah, not really, no. So it variates for you, depending on how you're feeling, what you're doing, totally, where, yeah. what you're eating, where you are and stuff. Like when I, I just came from New York and there I was drinking quite a bit of coffee. Um, and it was helping me uh, keep my fire going, um, metaphorically I guess. Keep me keep me from just being in hibernation mode and keep my energy up a little bit yeah. and um, allow me to digest better and more smoothly and more efficiently. Um, but yeah, right now here in Koh Phangan, I'm, I'm really not even drinking any water. I'm actually just urine fasting all through the day. So I just drink my urine nice. and at the moment I'm only urinating like two, three times throughout the day, but I don't feel thirsty. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you always seem fine when I'm around, you're always energized, always alive, yeah. and yeah, so. able to train and stuff like that, which is really good. And what benefits did you notice from switching to one meal a day? Um, you know, I went into a, a real detox when I started doing it, and so I was having 
um, quite a bit of tiredness and and headaches actually when I started doing it um, but I knew that this was part of the process and it yeah. was something to be worked through and once I kind of broke through those initial three days I was amazed by the amount of um, energy that I was having at a stable level throughout the day. Yes. It's, you, you don't yeah. have these like ups and downs and ups and downs of like, whoa, I'm on top of the world and now I'm like crashing down. Yeah. It's like you're, you're very stable and if anything, you kind of rise throughout the day. By the end of the day, before you break your fast, it's like, holy crap, yes. I'm so, I can just zone in on anything and, yeah. and just go crazy on yeah. um, whatever I want to. Um, so yeah, I was amazed by the stable energy levels. I was amazed by how much clearly I could think about things. Yeah, the cognitive uh, like function is just like wow, it's ridiculous. Aristotle used to fast for mental clarity. I mean, just to philosophize on things and to write, he would fast and nice. just to have more um, clearness in his brain. So that's a huge benefit. Um, I noticed I was getting stronger in my workouts at, at a much faster rate than I was previously. Um, and did you notice any other benefits of training? Do you notice any difference in recovery, stamina, endurance, oh, yeah. anything like this? Yeah, all of it, all of it improved. I mean, in every aspect, my training improved. In every aspect, my life improved. My hormones started to change. Yeah. Um, I started to be more peaceful. I noticed, you know, I'd been eating one meal a day and I met up with some friends that I hadn't seen in months and they're like, well, you changed, man. Like you, you talk slower now, and like yeah. you're more, you know, relaxed. And and it's. We were talking earlier about how um, how intermittent fasting is kind of stress on the body. Yeah, but a good stress it's, rather than chronic long-term stress. Like, right. Yeah, and it, and and by having those little bits of stress for intermittent fasting, Wim Hof method, cold water immersion, it's doing a little bit of stress to the body each time, which makes your body adapt and become stronger and more resilient. So it's right. actually a really good thing for you. But chronic stress, where you're stressed every day with your job or your relationship stuff like that, that's not good. It's going to make right. your cortisol levels too high and destroy your body and wreck your immune system. Right. You need a balance. There's a yeah. balance and there's a middle way of, of having stress and but also yeah. time to just relax and do nothing. Yeah. And finding that balance is, is um, really, <laughs> it's a process. But. Yeah, the duality. Yeah. Yeah. And what were some of your biggest mistakes that you made, if you made any? Because I don't know if you have or not. Um, or not even big mistakes, just mis certain things that maybe made it harder and you could have made it easier for yourself or, yeah. Hmm. Or did you find it quite easy from day one? I really, real... yeah, I really found it quite easy. You know, the biggest mistake I ever made with one meal a day is stopping eating one meal a day. At one point, I was like, I started to get a little loosey goosey with it, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna eat in like this, you know, shorter window, just whatever. I'll just eat when I want to, and it didn't really work too well for me. My digestion got way out of whack. I started to eat foods that I hadn't eaten in a long time, and and it just ended up being really bad and I put on quite a bit of weight. I lost quite a bit of strength. Oh, wow. Um, I, I lost a lot of mental clarity and, and focus throughout my entire life. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that I've, that I've run into is just like, once you, once you get into this, it's just like, it's the way to be. For yeah. me, anyway, that's what I found. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for sure, and I can relate to that as well. And it's yeah. like a lot of time when you get into intermittent fasting or one meal a day, your body's not used to it. It's going to produce a lot of ghrelin, which is a peptide, and it can make you feel hunger pains or those hunger noises. And what it's actually doing is getting your gut to produce BDNF, brain derivative neurotropic factor, which produces new neurons in the brain, which is good for you. But it's just used to those natural rhythms of eating. But right. after about a two week period, that will stop happening and your body becomes more fat adapted and you'll start to get the full benefits of fasting and it will be a lot easier. So yeah, sometimes you need to push through it. Like I said, you may get detox symptoms as well, but it's not a bad thing at all. It's a good thing showing that your body's being allowed to actually naturally detoxify itself and most people not allowing it to do that and that causes chronic health issues mentally and physically, holistically. So yeah. And also, with calorie intake, have you noticed any difference with calorie intake when you started and where you're at now? because a lot of people ask me about this and does it change over time? Do you become more better at simulating the nutrients and do you need less calories over time? Um, you know, when I began, I was finding it a little bit 
it's more difficult to eat like 1500 calories in one sitting because I'd never done that before. Yeah. I'd, I'd eaten smaller meals. And so I'd, I wasn't eating um, as much when I started. And then even day by day, it started to increase. Um, I did stick to around 1500 calories to 2000 calories for a while. I put, I've gone up as far as like 3000, 4000. Um, I've come back down to 800 to 1000. Um, it's a, it's a day by day thing yeah. for me. It really is. So, some days it's less, some days it's more. Um, there, I notice certain benefits when I'm eating less and certain benefits when I'm eating more. It just depends. It depends on my training and yes, so and things. other things going on in my yeah. life. And um, yeah, so, yeah, so would you in that sort of? It seems that your what you would recommend to people and what you do yourself is more intuitive eating right. rather than calorie counting or calorie restriction and yeah. saying calories in, calories out, and all this stuff. Like, mindful, mindful yeah. eating. Yeah. Slow down. Enjoy. Um, make sure you enjoy every bite of food that you take. If you're if you're eating food and you're like just eating it to bury yourself or bury an emotion, yeah. then you probably want to slow down a bit and 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 collect yourself, um, which is something that I've run into. Um, <laughs> you just you're just overeating and you keep going and keep going, even though I'm already sick, and but just keep shoving shoveling it in. Yeah. Um, so mindfulness while you're eating is is really oh, the ultimate. For sure the number one and make sure what you're eating is what you want to eat that's a big key yeah and that it makes you feel good as well yeah right be very aware of if it's affecting you badly stop eating those foods right. start yeah. eating cleaner foods that are better for you yeah and yeah i could say the same it variates from time to time depending on so many factors and variables so don't just set one thing you're not a car yeah. where you just work out the distance you're going and put the right amount of fuel in so yeah just be yeah mindful like i said i highly highly recommend that and um, yeah, so it's yeah, it's, it seems it's doing really well for you, and yeah, your body composition it helps you stay at low body fat yeah. as well, which is really really good. Another thing that um, people may run into when doing one meal a day is is they feel an empty stomach for the first time in their life, <laughs> which you know, growing up, a lot of us we've we've had plenty our whole lives we've never really had experienced true scarcity so we never had to go to sleep on an empty stomach um so running into that feeling it's like a new it's a new thing and it's like whoa you know what is this and your body will will experience it as as stressful and um it's just new and so when you feel that you it's something you're gonna have to get used to and it's something that i love now and it's it's a lot of the reason that i continue to eat one meal a yeah. day because I just, I, I, when you have that empty stomach, it's like you just feel so clear and, yeah. and light and, yeah. and full of vitality. Um, yeah, and do, have you noticed as well alongside that, that any difference when it comes to eating your food compared to when eating multiple meals a day? Do you notice that you'll enjoy it more, you appreciate it more, anything oh, like that? Oh, definitely, this? yeah. The, the, the end of the day is always a, a feast. Yeah. It's, always, it's always festive. <laughs> And um, especially when you get to enjoy it with somebody yeah. else, that's yeah. like, that's yeah. it's, amazing. It's, so it's like the inner child comes out in your bit and he's playful and it's really fun. It's just, yeah, it's, amazing. I always say it's similar to like going to school five days a week or working five days a week and you finally make it to the weekend and it's like, yes, we <laughs> made it. We finally made that's it. That's what it's like every day we're eating one meal a day. <laughs> every day you get, you finally, you know, the sun's, the sun starts setting and it's like, oh yeah, yeah. baby, it's that yeah. time. Nice. You know, we're going to feast. Yeah. And have you found, I don't know, maybe you have compared to me, I found when I was eating normally a lot of meals throughout the day, it would make my energy levels go up and down. But I found once eating a lot of calories with one meal a day, the majority of the time, as long as I don't overeat, I actually feel my energy levels go up. I don't know if you noticed that at all. Maybe or maybe not. When you were eating multiple meals a day? So, multiple meals a day make my energy levels go up and down, but I found with fasting, when I get to my one meal, I, it's like I can feel that I'm really like absorbing it and utilizing it. I find yeah. that it doesn't, as long as I don't overeat, it actually energizes me more and makes me more with it. I don't know if right. you've experienced that at all, but it just feels like my body's really using it up. So it's like, wow, when are we next going to get food? So we better use all this quickly and put it into the right places. And right. I feel that like I'm getting the full effects from it. Unlike when I was eating multiple meals a day, a lot of time I'd eat 
and many levels massively dropped right every time i think that's also possibly got to do with the the high amount of hormones that yep. you've got going on at the end of the fast so just pretty much no matter what you do you're just going to be like yeah. enjoying it and and having a good time with it and so to enjoy a meal fully like that is is so amazing for the digestion and so amazing for your well-being and to to enjoy your fuel that you're putting in your body is going to allow you to enjoy life all around yeah um so yeah yeah, yeah and it frees up so much time as well which is oh man yeah the, the, that's that's something i noticed going into one meal a day i started to realize holy crap the amount of time I spent previously on thinking about what I was going to eat, you know, when I was going to eat it, who I was going to eat it with, what time I'm going to eat, what, you know, all this, all this stuff and the amount of enjoyment and pleasure that I get solely from that, I was realizing how fatuous that is yes. and how much I was wasting my life because ultimately we don't, we don't need that. And so if you can, um, if you can get enjoyment and pleasure from things other than food, um, yes. yeah, you start to really, things really start to change. You start to, you know, you pick up a new hobby or you, you get, you develop that skill that you've been wanting to develop for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. And a lot of people, it's like you saying about emotions earlier, a lot of people may find, I have sometimes for intense stress whilst doing one meal a day, that I may crave to have multiple meals within the day. So I think yeah. addressing your emotions and processing your emotions and being present with them and loving towards them and accepting them, I think it's very, very key. Otherwise, I think people find it really hard with one meal a day if they're not doing that. I don't know if you've yeah. noticed this at all. but Yeah, there's a definite connection in between. Well, the stomach is, is very, it's, high, it's highly emotional. And so if you're burying your stomach with food all the time, you're kind of burying your emotions. But if yeah. you keep that fire there, you keep your stomach empty and you keep that fire going, you can burn through your emotions yeah, or come feel up. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they will come up, definitely. If you got an empty tummy, you're gonna run into, yeah. into emotions. Yeah, to make sure you process them for sure. And it's like a lot of yeah. people call their food comfort food. And it's like they're right. trying to feel love through food and get their needs met for it. But it's a form of emotional abuse when you're eating. And, depressing your emotions and denying them that's like what a lot of our parents did to us as we were growing up it's emotionally abusive yeah. and not good for you um and do you have any tips for anyone that's getting into one meal a day or are finding it hard like yeah don't worry about um you know you have if you have feelings coming up when you when you try to fast if you feel lightheaded if you feel you know you need to take a nap take a nap it's okay don't don't worry about the about the being um, what's the word deprived of nutrients because I find a lot of people worry about it and it actually makes it a lot worse yeah because they're in their head about it yeah. and so just relax if you feel like you need to take a nap take a nap or if you you know if your stomach re really really feels empty and it feels really bad drink a whole bunch of water or drink a coffee or drink some herbal tea um, sweeten it with stevia, make it tasty. Yeah. Or even uh, sparkling water, that's a brilliant trick sparkling to get rid of water. it. Like, that's really yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is a good idea. Um, yeah. So don't worry so much. If you want to try it, then give it a go. Um, do it. You can do it cold turkey, you can work your way into it. You know, do like a yeah. three hour eating window, and then the next day a two hour, and the next day a one hour, or you go even slower than that. Um, yeah, so just being gentle on yourself and not pushing yeah. it to the point where it actually has a negative and dangerous effect on right. you and listening to your body. Right. Yeah, I think that's really, really good advice. Yeah. And yeah, just take it one step at a time. Like, yeah, you can easily do it if you're doing it correctly. And yeah, you can watch loads of, listen to the information obviously in this video, take it on board, but look on the channel for loads of videos that can help you succeed on one meal a day as well. And is there anything else you'd like to add before we end the video? Um, no, I just want to wish everybody luck on their journeys, on your beautiful journey. Enjoy it, yeah. have fun, be happy, smile. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah, we thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed this interview and that you've learned some valuable information and that he's inspired and motivated you as well because he inspires and motivates me. So I'm sure he will for you as well. Very high level person that's doing loads of amazing things in life, very high vibrational person. So if you've got any questions for either of us, leave them down below as always. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. 
like it down below. Share this with others that you think would love to hear about his two year, one meal a day journey and his experience overall with this amazing one meal a day diet journey. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below to receive a lot more one meal a day informational videos, one meal a day interviews with people that I find that have been on this journey for a while, calisthenic workout videos and many other videos to help you go in the direction of achieving and sustaining the energy levels that you desire, the fitness levels and the body that you desire as well. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go and get those gains. Peace. <laughs>